welcome back we have been talking about synthesis of uh, several commercially important polymers specifically the step growth polymers in the last class we finished with the synthesis of uh, polyimides and uh, today we are going to uh, start by talking about the synthesis of polyurethanes so the topic remains the same it's in general the synthesis of industrial polymers so let us uh, start the discussion so today we are going to talk about polyurethanes these are also important uh, engineering uh, polymers and uh, polyurethanes they contain this urethane functional group which is this so this this group is contained in these uh, polyurethane molecules so this functional group is called urethane now uh, you might already know uh, from our uh, discussion uh, in the earlier classes that uh, this kind of uh, linkages can be obtained by reacting an alcohol with a diisocyanate or a, a, a just an alcohol with an isocyanate then you get the urethane but if you react a uh, diol with a diisocyanate then you will get the polyurethanes because these are both are bifunctional uh, monomers so if you use stoichiometric amount of both so you are reacting your diol with diisocyanate so this is your isocyanate group nco then an r prime just to uh, differentiate it from the r here and then you have n C O. So, you have diisocyanate if you are reacting stoichiometric amount of both then the product will be a polyurethane. So, on one end there will be alcohol and this is your urethane linkage C O N H and then R prime N H C O O R O. Okay. So, both sides there is there is, uh, there is uh, isocyanate moiety that reacts with the alcohol. So, this is an urethane linkage and then the alcohol also has to be in the repeat unit. So, this n minus 1 units of this and then you have to end with another diisocyanate because this is stoichiometric amount. One side it will end with isocyanate, another side it will end with alcohol. So, <coughs> this will be NH um, R prime N C O. So, this is your polyurethane with the urethane linkage. You can already see that this is your urethane linkage that I was talking about. Now, this is a simplistic way of depicting polyurethane synthesis. Just you take your alcohol diol and you react with the diisocyanate and you get your product. Now, in actuality, what is done is that the polyurethane during the polyurethane synthesis a diamine is also present in the system. So, basically you have a mixture of diol and a diamine that is reacted with your diisocyanate. So, that what will happen is that you will also have urea linkages in your polyurethanes. So, what will happen is that you have diamine present, now you also have diisocyanate present. So, there will be polymer chains which will end with isocyanate linkage. Now, let us say this is a polymer chain which ends with isocyanate linkage. This wavy line depicts a long chain, maybe I do not know the length of the chain, just in general I am depicting here. And two of these molecules I am just writing down face to face, drawing the structure of this. Now, two of these molecules can react with a diamine because you also added a diamine along with a diol in the system. And you know that when isocyanate reacts with amine, you get an amide linkage. So, basically, in this case, it will be uh, a urea 
uh, linkage. So, what will happen is that this can attack here and also this lone pair can attack here. So, ultimately you will get this linkage on this side C O N H. So, you, this is urea linkage R and this side also you will have the same urea linkage. So, basically, but in general you will have amide linkage in the system. So, you are doing the reaction uh, of diol with a diisocyanate in the presence of a diamine. So, this kind of urea linkages also will be produced in the system. Uh, now, something that you need to keep in mind is the fact that of course, when you are preparing polyurethanes, you have this ure urethane functionality in the polymer. And also, when you are preparing polyurethane in presence of a diamine, you will have this amide or the urea linkages in the polymer. So, basically in the system, you have both urea linkage as well as your uh, urethane linkage, urethane linkage. So, both are present. Now, you also have this isocyanate function that is present in your starting material as well as in your polymer maybe on one end group is there. Now, this isocyanate can react with both the amide linkage as well as the urethane linkage by itself. So, what I mean is that there can be side reactions because of course, during the synthesis of polyurethane as the name suggests you will have urethane linkage and since you are having the diamine you will have an amide, amide linkage in this case the urea linkage. So, your isocyanate that is present in the system say this is your isocyanate I am just depicting it as R double prime the side of that isocyanate on one side. Now, that can actually react with your urethane linkage that has been produced. So, this could be a polymer you know this R prime a long chain this R can be a long chain in general because this is a urethane linkage that is of course, going to be there because the polymer is polyurethane and isocyanate, isocyanate is also going to be present because this is a monomer uh, this is one of the monomers or this could be also at the end of a polymer chain that can react with your urethane linkage. So, here you have a lone pair on the nitrogen of this urethane linkage that can attack on this carbon, this carbon is electron deficient oxygen is withdrawing and nitrogen is withdrawing electron. So, it can attack here and it can produce a linkage. Now, this reaction is reversible. So, I am just drawing from this side the molecule. Now, this attacks here on the carbon. So, and then this double bond will open up. So, that ultimately and then the proton will be transferred to this nitrogen. So, it will be R double prime NH and this C double bond oxygen will remain and then the linkage of this carbon will be with this nitrogen. So, you will have N R C O O R prime. So, basically you can just say, say that this lone pair will attack here it is like that that arrow goes this side and this side double bond remains intact and this will come here and ultimately this proton will be transferred here. So, this is your product. So, the linkage that you produce here is called an allophanate linkage and if this R double prime contains another isocyanate group then it is not difficult to understand that on this side there will be another isocyanate and that can react with another polymer chain. Let us say this is a polymer chain in which you have an urethane functionality like this. So, this urethane functionality reacted with this isocyanate. Now, this R double prime if it contains another isocyanate group then after this reaction you have another dangling isocyanate on this side that can react with the urethane linkage that is present in another polymer chain. So, this way there will be a cross linking system you can have cross links if you have R double prime uh, if the R double prime contains an isocyanate. Also this isocyanate that you have here that can react with your urea linkage that is that is produced in the system because you have a diamine also present during the polymerization. 
So, in general I am just drawing this urea linkage as this. So, you have an urea, urea linkage. Again when you are doing the reaction you have to do the same way. Now, depending on R or R prime either this side will attack on this carbon or this nitrogen will attack on this carbon. So, let us say this nitrogen attacks on this carbon. This is also a reversible reaction. So, the product will be something like this R double prime NH C double bond oxygen. Now, this nitrogen is attached to this carbon. So, that will be nitrogen directly attached. This R will be here this side and then you have C O N H R prime. This is called a bi urate linkage. In this way also you can cross link different polymer chains. Let us assume this R double prime contains an isocyanate unit. In that case this is also a way in which you can cross link different polymer chains. So, this kind of cross links then will be present in the system when you are preparing polyurethane uh, polymers. Considering that polyurethane of course, as the name suggests will contain urethane linkage and also it will contain urea linkage because your diamine is present and your isocyanate is there both in the polymer at the end of the polymer it could be or also in the monomer it is present. So, this kind of cross links could be produced, but typically these are you see these are reversible reactions and if you heat it up say around 150 degrees Celsius, if you heat it up then what happens is that the reaction goes backwards. So, even if this kind of cross links are produced in the system that is not detrimental assuming you do not want these cross links. So, because you are doing at a slightly higher temperature and then these reaction will, uh, reactions will actually go backwards and these cross links will no longer exist in the system. We will talk about this after why we do not want these kinds of cross links in the system. Okay. Now, typically you will do the reaction at moderate temperature 120 to 130 degrees Celsius. I mean typically greater than 100 degrees uh, Celsius and uh, I mean sometimes what we will do you will also go to lower than 100 degrees Celsius not a very high temperature. As a, as a matter of fact many times you will do around 100 degree or slightly less than 100 degree maybe. The reason being if you have the reaction temperature set at quite a high value then your uh, polyurethane let us uh, draw the polyurethane like this. So, this is a polyurethane if the temperature is high enough then this will degrade and this can produce NH2 your amine and this carbon dioxide will be evolving as a gas and an alkene can be produced. So, this can degrade at high enough temperature. So, normally you do not go beyond 120, 110 like that. So, of course, one of the one of the starting materials is a is a diisocyanate, diisocyanate monomer and uh, typically uh, what you what you will do is you will put uh, some aromatic rings in the system because you know aromatic rings provide stiffness and they will also provide higher temperature stability. So, your diisocyanate monomer that you will use normally you will use an aromatic diisocyanate. So, the commonly used diisocyanates are toluene diisocyanate. So, you have a toluene and the isocyanate groups could be at so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2 and 6 position. So, this is 2, 6 toluene diisocyanate or they could be at 2 and 4 position. Now, the reason I am just drawing it like this is because I am going to show you the synthesis of this from the starting material. So, the basically both will be produced together. So, how can you get this? If you go backwards it is coming like this. Uh, reaction of this diamine, I am just putting the other NH2 like this because this NH2 could be on this position or on this position, it is a mixture of them. So, if you react this with carbonyl chloride you will get your isocyanate and how can you get this particular molecule? Basically, you reduce the corresponding nitro derivative. So, we are actually working backwards just to show you how the products are get obtained and this nitro units how do you get by simple nitration with nitric acid, simple nitration of toluene with nitric acid 
will give you this product. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 3 step and then you can get your toluene diisocyanate. Uh, another diisocyanate is also used quite commonly and that is methylene diphenyl isocyanate. So, you have Typically, it is called MDI. So, this is methylene. So, these are methylene groups, that is why it is methylene, and there are two phenyl units. So, diphenyl, okay, diphenyl diisocyanate. All right. Now, in actuality, I already told that you are using a diol, you are reacting with a di. Uh, isocyanate, if you see the first page of today, that was the reaction that I talked about. Now, normally the diol that you are going to use, this diol, this will be some kind of an oligomeric system or maybe it, it is itself a polymer to start with. What I want to mean, it will become clearer now. So, I told you that we are going to use a diol and a diisocyanate. Now, this diol typically it is a macro glycol, it is a macro glycol. So, how do you get, I mean this is called glycol because suppose you take this diol, what is this? This is ethylene glycol. So, that is why you are saying glycol and it is a macro glycol because it is a macro molecule, it is not a small molecule, there, there, there is a uh, there are a lot of units in between the two end alcohols. That is why it is a macro glycol. Now, there are two kinds of macro glycols that are used. One is polyester based and another is polyether based. So, polyester, polyester based macro glycol that is produced by very simple reaction. We already talked about that. You use a diol and excess of that and you make a polyester out of it. So, you also use a diacid. So, if you react a diol with a diacid and if you have an excess of diol, we have talked about these things. It is a polyester that is produced and that will be on both sides at the end there will be alcohol because this is in excess. So, typically what you will have is this molecule. So, this is basically a diol that you can use as a starting what you can say is a pre polymer because this is a precursor to the polymer. So, this diol you can react with a diisocyanate in order to produce your product. Now, this diol is a macro glycol because this is obviously not a small molecule, you have a polymer unit here, n number of units, and this is also polyester based macro glycol because basically this reaction has produced a polyester linkage. So, you have the ester linkage and this thing we have talked about before how to prepare polyesters, react a di di a diol with a diacid and you will get a polyester. Now, this diol is used in excess so as to have alcohol at the end of the polymer chain on both sides. So, basically this you can draw up as a chain like this on both sides you have alcohol. So, this is the kind of diol that you are going to use uh, for your polyurethane synthesis and this is based on polyester. Now, polyester if you have esters are prone to hydrolysis. So, instead of polyester based macro glycol, you could also use what you call as polyether based macro glycol. Now, polyether as the name suggests there will be multiple ether linkages. What you do is just you react your diol instead of a diacid you react with an epoxide a strained three member ring containing your oxygen. So, what will happen? This will attack here, this is the less hindered site and this will open up and that O minus can again attack on another molecule of this and then the process can go on. So, ultimately the product that you will get is the following. So, you have an oxygen here and it has opened up. So, this oxygen is connected to a CH 2 
and then you have C H R prime and this oxygen can again attack and ultimately what will have at the end you will have a alcohol unit here. So, this is your polyether based polyether based macroglycol. So, we talked about two kinds of uh, starting diols one is your polyester based diol another is polyether based diol and we call this diol as macroglycol because this is a macromolecule either it is a polyester or a polyether actually it is a polyether or polyester and both ends are alcohol that is why it is a macroglycol. Now, so how do we use this macroglycol in order to prepare your polyurethane? So, let us say we will talk about polyurethane rubber preparation. So, basically we are going to talk about the preparation of thermoplastic polyurethane elastomers and I will tell you what the properties of these materials are and why they are called like this. So, what you do? So, you start by producing a pre polymer, a pre polymer which is basically a macroglycol. This you produce by by reacting by reacting a uh, you know. So, in fact, what you can also say just to make sure that uh, your uh, nomenclature is correct, let us not call this particular molecule as a pre polymer because that will be confusing. Let us just stick to telling that this is macroglycol we are going to use the term pre polymer in some other case and I am going to come to that. Let us say this is a macroglycol. So, again, so we will not say that macroglycol is a pre polymer. Let us say you start with a macroglycol, it will become clear in a minute what I want to mean and this macroglycol let us say it is a poly polyester based macroglycol. So, linear linear polyester based macroglycol and you know this molecule will have a molecular weight in the range of not a very long molecule 800 to 2500. Now, this macroglycol you can react with an excess of diisocyanate and then what you will have is a polymer chain which will end on both sides with diisocyanate. Of course, this is diol. So, this alcohol will react with isocyanate to produce urethane linkage, but this molecule to start with this is not a very long molecule only 800 to 2500 is the molecular weight and if you react with excess of diisocyanate this molecule will be having urethane linkage as well as at the at the end of the chain both sides you will have isocyanate and this molecule is not a long molecule and that is the reason why you will call that as a pre polymer. This is just to clarify the nomenclature. So, you react with your, your macroglycol with an excess of diisocyanate typically you take 2 equivalent of diisocyanate 2 equivalent and normally you will use this diisocyanate methylene diphenyl diisocyanate MDI and then the, after this reaction you get what you call as pre polymer. We will explain this further now in another page. So, let us say you take your macroglycol, this is your macroglycol of molecular weight 800 to 2500 and you react with excess typically uh, 2 equivalent of diisocyanate, let us say it is R N C O okay. and this is maybe methylene diphenyl diisocyanate MDI. So, this is 2 equivalent. So, if you do that then what you will get? You will get this particular product NCO on one side and then you have R NH CO O O CO NH R NCO. 
this is the product that you will get. I mean, I am just drawing it in, in a very general way. This is what you call as your pre polymer. Okay. So, this is your pre polymer. Of course, this is an urethane linkage as you can see and this is also an urethane linkage. Inside you have this polyester. So, basically this is a polyester, this is a polyester which ends on both sides with an alcohol because you are you have taken excess of alcohol when you reacted the dicarboxylic acid with the diol and this is your diisocyanate. So, ultimately what you will get on both sides you will have isocyanate linkage, isocyanate that is ready to be reacted and you have this molecule. This is your pre polymer if you have to go by the correct nomenclature. Now, this you react with a small bifunctional molecule which is maybe either a diol or a diamine, a small molecule which can be called as a chain extender. Chain extender. If you if you remember here, so if you have a diamine and it, it reacts with isocyanate, so basically this can act as a chain extender because you had this chain and this chain. Now since it has come in between through covalent linkage the chain has the chain length has uh, become close to double. So this could be acting as a chain extender like that. So, what you do is that you have this pre polymer and you react with let us say 1 4 butane diol or just a small diamine. So, let us say you react with a small diol, maybe this is 1 4 butane diol, it could be so the, your R prime, it could be CH2 whole 4. Okay. So, if you do that, then what will happen? This will produce urethane linkage and this will actually link the chains because this is your what you call as your chain extender. So, if you react with this diol which is your small diol which is your chain extender then what will be the product? So, let us first draw the macroglycol unit and from this end we will attach this and then try to complete the repeat unit. So, you have NCO which is isocyanate that reacts with your alcohol. So, if it reacts with your alcohol then what will be the product? You will have an urethane linkage here, urethane linkage that will be produced here which will be NH COO and then this R prime will be there and then this alcohol you have to finish. All right. Now, this alcohol is acting as a chain extender. So, on the other side also it will react with another isocyanate. So, on the other side you have to again draw the isocyanate linkage which will be this and then you have to finish this molecule R NH. Of course, this will be again producing another isocyanate all right and that isocyanate could be this isocyanate because you started with this side. So, that is why the linkage will finish like this. So, you have to be able to draw the repeat unit correctly. So, if you are reacting this diisocyanate with a diol, then what will happen is that you start with this, this particular unit here, this particular unit. So, this is your poly, uh, poly uh, this is your macroglycol unit and then on this side you have an NCO isocyanate that can react with this alcohol to produce your urethane linkage. Now, this alcohol has another OH and this is acting as chain extender. So, on this side it will react with another NCO. So, that is why you will have another urethane linkage and then you have to complete the chain and that is why here it is ending at NH because here was also another NCO that has reacted with this alcohol of the at the end of this chain at the end of the macroglycol chain to produce the urethane linkage. So, this C double bond oxygen instead of putting here you could also put here. So, ultimately what you have got this polyester part, this polyester segment that you have got in the repeat unit, this is basically a soft segment because you have flexible polyester linkage in between. However, if you look at the urethane linkage, there is a lot of possibility of hydrogen bonding interactions between different chains and that gives it a characteristic. So, this particular part, this particular part will become uh, movable or flexible at a higher temperature. When you say soft block or hard block that would mean soft block it will the, the, the chains will become movable 
at a lower temperature. So, another way of saying this is that the soft block has a lower glass transition temperature and the hard block has a higher glass transition temperature. So, to make the long story short, in the repeat unit you have both hard block, hard segment as well as soft segment. Now, this part, this kind of molecules that you are going to get here from this kind of structure if you are producing, this is your thermoplastic elastomer. We will explain this further as we go along. So, one of the kinds of thermoplastic elastomers, thermoplastic uh, polyurethane elastomers is your spandex fiber. Okay. So, which can be actually uh, extended up to 600 percent strain and so it, it is quite highly stretchable, it can be stretched to a high length so that the overall strain can could become 600 percent of the original uh, and afterwards when you remove the strain it can come back to its original length and also it can retain its tensile strength, it does not break. So, that is the property of an elastomer that basically if you are applying force on the material it can be extended to quite a high length and afterwards if you remove the uh, applied force it can come back to its original uh, dimension. I mean the stress versus strain curve will not be linear, but then it can still come back to its original configuration. So, it will not break. So, it is quite highly uh, qu quite uh, stretchable to a very uh, large strain. Okay. So, one particular form of thermoplastic polyurethane elastomers is the spandex fiber and these fibers as I told you it can withstand up to 600 percent strain and these fibers they are co-span with let us say uh, nylons or polyesters when you are making the fabric they are co-span with this so as to impart stretchable stretchability, stretchability and flexibility to the uh, clothes and typically they are you know sports wears because they will have to undergo a lot of uh, you know uh, those wears when you are playing sport they have to undergo a lot of uh, forces they, they have to experience a lot of forces and st stretching and also they, they should not tear. So, this is already you see one of the uses of this material all right. So, how do you prepare this specific kind of molecule you react to your diol as I told you this is a this molecular weight is typically 2000 this is your macroglycol polyester based macroglycol you can react with your uh, methylene diphenyl diisocyanate. So, this is MDI and this reaction will produce already I have shown you before the product the structure. So, this is the pre polymer that you will get and in this particular situation instead of a diol you use a diamine is a hydrazine, hydrazine which is a chain extender in this case and the structure of the repeat unit of spandex will be something like this all right. So, follow the rule that I have told you about regarding drawing the structure of this. So, this side you finish in H R and then here this will produce the linkage in this case it will be an urea linkage. So, that will be N H uh, N H C O N H. So, you see here uh, in fact you have this N C O. So, on this side basically you have an urethane linkage that is produced by reacting of the amine of this and on this side you have a urea linkage that is produced all right because this is NH2 NH2 and that NH2 on this side it can react with your this part of the molecule. So, then you have to extend this on this side. So, this will be NH R NH and then it will have uh, this amine here it has to react with. So, basically this is not amine this is to start with an NCO and that NCO reacts with the corresponding alcohol. So, you will have an urethane linkage on this side all right. So, 
So, you have an urethane linkage here, you have an urea linkage uh, here. So, ultimately this is having a lot of possibility of hydrogen bonding and so this is your hard block and this is your flexible unit which is your soft block. So, this will have a lower T g and this will have a higher T g I mean separately if you take and the R here as I told you this is your methylene unit flanked by two aromatic units. This methylene diiso diphenyl diisocyanate. So, this is your spandex the structure of your spandex it has both the hard block as well as the soft block in this material. So, what we will do is that in the next class we will start by uh, explaining a little bit more how the how the property that we talked about that stretchability of the material without breaking the material you can stretch it nonlinearly and it can come back to its original configuration when you remove the applied uh, stress those things how they generate that we will talk about and then we will start talking about. So, we will finish the discussion on polyurethanes and we will start talking about other uh, important uh, polymers. So, till then thank you and uh, goodbye.